Hi everybody, this is Refresh, and I am here for a showdown between two shadows over Innistrad Sealed decks and the Battle the Horde challenge deck from Born of the Gods. So what I'm going to be using is the Harvester, which will let both of the sealed decks loot once per turn. And this activation will affect both, per my ruling system, I still have one of these cards. Both will be using the Explorer, which lets them play an additional land on each turn. And the Vanquisher, lets, which lets them start with an additional card and have a maximum hand size of 8. Ready? Let's draw 8. We'll be playing on normal difficulty, which is after 3 turns, the Horde will begin its attack. Alright, we've got three lands, no islands, and several things, many of which require islands. I think it's good enough because we can cast the Graph Mole and possibly loot into what we need and just discard the things that we don't. So we'll keep that. And this one, we have four lands and four spells. I think that's good enough as well. So let's start like this. We'll have three turns before the Horde will begin attacking. So, turn number one, we will play two lands. We will play both forests on this side. There's nothing else to do here. And on this side, we will play a swamp and a plains, and we will cast the only creature we can, which is a Rancid Rats. That is the end of the turn. We're gonna loot once. Each will draw a card. This Emissary is Sleepless on this side, and Thornhide Wolves on this side. So I think I absolutely like Watcher of the Web. I don't like counters against this particular deck. So I'm going to get rid of Deny Existence. And on this side, I'll get rid of the Emissary of the Sleepless. It's a little bit slower. Okay, and then we'll go into turns. Draw, beginning turn two. We'll play the Island. And on this side, we'll play the planes. We will attack with the Rancid Rats to do one to the Minotaur. It loses a Reckless Minotaur. And then we will cast some things. I think on this side, the obvious thing is to cast the Graph Mole. And on this side, the obvious thing is to cast the Magnifying Glass, being the only other thing that we can cast. But it opens up another man on this side as well, so we've ramped. And then we are going to end turn two. We're going to harvest yet again. We have an island on this side and a moorland drifter on this side. Of all these cards, I think on this side, the stitched bangler is actually the least useful. So I will discard that. Well, I don't really need the planes right now, but just in case we draw some of it, requires it. We'll dis discard the Stitched Wrangler. And on this side, we will discard probably the Forest, because there's only one card that requires green. And we're gonna hit the mana that we need on this side. Okay. Let's untap. Our, I forgot to play two lands last turn, even though I could have. The Horde is going to attack at the end of this turn, so I have to keep that in mind when I'm choosing what I'm going to do. I'm gonna play the Plains. I'm gonna play the Island. I'm gonna play the other Island. And the Watcher, I think, can probably take on the whatever the Horde is throwing out. But I think I want the Thornhide Wolves, just because it really can take on whatever the Horde is dishing out. We will, on this side, we'll probably play the Near Heath Chaplain to start getting some life on, my on the future attacks. We're going to attack with the Rancid Rats for now. Yeah, to do a little bit of damage. Yeah, let's go ahead and attack with the Graph Mole, too. We'll do three. One, two, three. These are dead. And then we will cast the Thornhide Wolves on this side. Okay, it is now the Minotaur's first turn. They are going to play three cards. One, two, three. They have an artifact, which is pretty bad for us. Uh, and these two will attack. There's a 3-2 and a 2-2 two, two on the attack. The Thornhead Wolves will absorb the 3-2. We will take 2 damage, go to 18, and then it'll be the end of this turn. We are going to loot once more. 
Mephali Moondrakes and Plains. We want mana on this side, so we'll ditch the Griff Spoon. And on this side, we, well, we really want to keep all of these. I guess Forgotten Creation is the least useful now. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then we're untapping and we will go into the next play. We drew a Woodland Stream and a Bygone Bishop. Let's go ahead and play these two lands. And this land, so we have five on this side. We'll cast the Bygone Bishop first. And then we'll cast the Moorland Drifter. Investigate. And on this side, six, we'll go ahead and cast the Watcher in the Web. And because the Watcher in the Web can block a lot of things, we're going to attack with everything that is not a good blocker. So we will attack with the Thornhide Wolves, we will attack the Rancid Rats, the Near Heath Chaplain, and these two are have summoning sickness. And we will leave the Graph Mole, Watcher in the Web, and these two because they can't attack behind. So that is four, five, six, seven, eight damage with three lifelink. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus three lifelink, which takes us to 21. Okay, and then we will give the turn back to the Minotaurs. They will play four cards now. Reckless Minotaur, Minotaur Younghorn, Phobos Reaper, and Intervention of Karanos. Okay, this, at the beginning of combat, it'll deal three damage to each creature. So, a lot of things are going to die this turn. At the beginning of combat, three, 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 all of these die. Three, 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 all of these survive. Three, 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 all of these die. That's pretty bad for one of our teams here. And that is the end of the turn. We will... Yeah, let's loot. Let's see, see if we can get something better. Bygone Bishop is definitely better than Puncturing Light at this point. And I think Nefali Moondrakes is better than Erdwall Illuminator. All right. We are untapping. And let's draw. A land and a Niblis of Dusk. We'll play the land because it's not doing much. We'll go ahead and play the Bygone Bishop, because it's a creature. And on this side we'll play the Nephalia Moondrakes. We will attack with the Thornhide Wolves. Ready? Four damage. Well, no, let's attack with the Graph Mole. Yeah. So seven, six damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. All these are gone. It is now the Minotaur's turn. It will attack with four, or it will cast four. Three damage at the beginning of each turn. When it attacks, it gets first strike and must be blocked. Minotaur Younghorn and Reckless Minotaur. So at the beginning of combat, each one takes three damage. That again wipes out the Bygone Bishop. And the Descend on the Prey makes that, makes, uh, uh, kills both of these two. So it doesn't matter, the Minotaurs aren't attacking this turn, since they just killed themselves. And we will go to the next turn. We'll sacrifice Clue on this side to see if we can get something. A land. Let's go ahead and loot. See if we can get something better. Puncturing Light versus Moreland Drifter. Well, Moreland Drifter is a card, and Puncturing Light is not that good against this deck, so we'll keep the Niblis of Dusk. Ready? Draw a card, lands, we'll play them, and, well, let's go on the attack. Thornhide Wolves and Nephalia Moondrakes are definitely attacking. You can block a bunch, you'll block, you might block. Yeah, it'll just be those two. So that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. Okay, so Vitality Solves takes a creature from the graveyard and puts it on the battlefield. What is the best of these creatures? Probably this three, three. Yeah. And in this side, probably the Bygone Bishop. Yeah. And then we can use Near Hate the Chaplain again later. Let's draw a card off the Plundered Statue. Pale Rider. Okay, we can just cast all the guys. So, one, two, three, four, five. These guys are on the battlefield. And then we'll cast the Moorland Drifter first, and then the Pale Rider. We have no cards to discard. We will get to get two more clues on this side. And we will go ahead and exile the Nerdith Chaplain to get a Spirit token. So we have even more on this side. Okay. The board looks really good. We'll pass the turn to the Minotaurs, which will get four. One, two, three, four. There is a single Minotaur Gore Seeker. When it attacks this turn, it'll get first strike and must be blocked. Next turn, it will draw two more cards with these refreshing elixirs. So it attacks, it must be blocked, but the Watcher in the web will just eat it. Okay, next turn. Draw, a swamp, and it confronts the unknown. Let's go ahead and use the harvester right now. A warped landscape and a daring sleuth. Well, I guess the warped landscape will let us pull a land out of the graveyard. To confront the unknown is not as good as the body of the, the daring sleuth. So we'll go like that. And let's play the warped landscape. We will attack, I think. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen here. If we can do eighteen damage. Five, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, okay. Everybody attacks and we'll win. Sixteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-eight. So a win. Sacrifices two Minotaurs. There are no Minotaurs to sacrifice. Mill seven more, but there's not even that many left. And the Shadows of Innistrad sealed decks handily beat the Battle of the Horde on normal mode. Okay, for game two against Battle of the Horde, we are going to be playing on difficult mode, which only gives two turns to the Shadows of Innistrad sealed decks before the Minotaurs attack. Let's start with eight cards a piece and see what we get. We've got three lands and a bunch of spells. I think that's worth keeping. And on this side we have three lands and a bunch of spells, also worth keeping. And Angelic Purge is actually meaningful this time around because those artifacts, when they land on the battlefield, make our life difficult. And so for the first turn, we will, can we cast anything from our hand? Yes, we can cast the Veteran Cathar, so we will do so. And on this side, we'll play a Plains and a Swamp. And we can't cast anything yet, so we will pass the turn. Okay, at the end of the turn, we're gonna loot. We'll draw a Pale Rider on this side and a Solitary Hunter on this side. We should probably discard Broken Concentration on this side, it's less useful. And on this side, we will probably discard the most expensive one, which is Emissary of the Sleepless. Okay. At the end of this, this is the last free turn that we have before the Minotaurs begin attacking. So let's cast, let's play the Planes on this side. And I think we will actually want to cast a Magnifying Glass on this side so that we can get more mana, because we're a little bit short here. On this side, we will want to cast another creature, and it'll probably be the Briar Bridge Patrol. Uh, we'll play both of these islands and cast the Briar Bridge Patrol, because it'll start the Investigate Engine. And we'll go ahead and attack with the Veteran Cathar, because it's not going to do any trading. So, attack. There'll be two damage done to this. One, two. 
sacrifices two minotaurs off the altar of Mogus, but that doesn't matter. And we will see what the minotaurs have in store for us for three. One minotaur youngblood, one minotaur gore seeker, and one plundered statue, which is pretty bad for us. All right, so these two will attack. I'm going to block the youngblood with the Briar Bridge Patrol, which will kill it and get us a clue. And we will take three damage from the Minotaur Gore Seeker to go to 17. Let us loot. Okay, on this side, I want to discard the Vessel of Ephemera. It's a bit on the slow side. And on this side, I want to discard... I'll probably discard the island because all the creatures, well, the Niblis is, might be the least useful because flying is not terribly useful. So let's get, discard the Niblis. All right. And let's untap. Then we'll draw. Merciless Resolve. And Veteran Cathar. All right, let's play this land. We have five mana open. I believe the Solitary Hunter is probably the best play on this side. Yeah, and then we can attack with the... Well, no, we want to keep this open because it needs to deal damage to creatures. It's better on the defense. So Veteran Cathar, Cathar is going to attack. Actually, we'll cast the Graph Mole so that we can get life off the clue. Okay, Graph Mole. On this side, we will cast... I want to keep this to be able to get both. So we'll go ahead and cast the... Cathar's Companion, and it'll start attacking soon. And then we're going to attack with the Veteran Cathar, and that'll be it for this turn. So Veteran Cathar attacks, we'll mill two. Nothing of relevance, and we will pass. Minotaur untaps, Minotaur casts four spells. One, two, three, and four. We have four Minotaurs attacking, a 3-2, a 3-2, a 4-1, and a 3-2, which is pretty bad. I think this will eat the one of the 3-2s. I don't think I want the Briar Bridge Patrol to be killed, because it's much better, but I think the Cathar's Companion, or we can just take all 10 damage. Maybe that's better. No, let's trade. Let's trade here, we'll take seven. Okay, taking seven to go to 10. The Reckless Minotaur dies at the end of the turn. And we have two of these on board, which is not very good. Okay, let's, let's loot. Lands, yay. We're going to discard the Merciless Resolve on this side. We are going to discard probably the Veteran Cathar. Well, actually, no, we want all this double striking business. Oh, let's go ahead and sack the clue too. Sack this clue. Gain three life. Go to 13. Draw a card. And then we will discard. I'll probably discard. No, we want the land, so. That's a good question. Solitary Hunter is quite good as a butt. Probably get rid of Puncturing Light on this side. So we need the lands pretty badly. And on this side, each of these has a really good benefit. So it's a really hard call as to what to discard. I guess I can get rid of the second veteran Cathar because the first one will be able to give double strike to these. So that's not so bad. Okay, let's untap, draw, apothecary geist and forest. We'll play the forest and the plains. On this side, we're going to play the planes, and then we're going to... I guess we'll just play the Apothecary Geist. It's not very good, but there's not a whole lot else we can do. So, four mana for the Apothecary Geist. It'll be an okay blocker against Young Horns. On this side, we can cast... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all of the things. So that's what we'll do. We're going to attack with the Veteran Cathar. Yeah. Mill two. Two, we get five life per player, that's 10 life, so we're at 23. And then cast all of the things. Graph Mole and Solitary Hunter. On this side, we will cast, oh, the Geist. And that's the end of the turn. 
It is now the Minotaur's turn. Untap, we'll play five. One, two, three, four, five. Minotaurs are on the attack. There are no spells at all. We have two threes, a three two, and two twos at the end, and a four one. We're not gonna block the four one because it's just gonna die. The three twos will be taken out. The three two will be taken out by the Graph Mole. The three, two three will be taken out by the three three. The, this two two will be taken out by the Pothager Carry Geist. This two three will be taken out by the Graph Mole. This will be taken out by the Solitary Hunter. So all these die, we'll take four and go to 19. And then all these will die. Everybody dies. Okay, and we'll get one clue on this side for that. And then we will untap. We are not going to harvest because there are no, no cards in this one's hands. Draw. We have a warp landscape on this side and a deny existence on this side. I guess we're just going to counter whatever spell gets cast. We'll see what happens. Uh, warp landscape will, will definitely play. I think we're going to go ahead and use it to get a swamp because we need one pretty badly here. There it is. We have three mana open. We could use it to get rid of one of those artifacts, but I don't think we will just yet. We're not in a bad place because the deck on the left is really killing it right now. The bench deck is really killing it right now. So, we'll go on the attacks now. Let's see, were there any spells cast last turn? Yes. Were there any spells cast last turn here? Deny existence? No. No, none of these are going to get cast. So, so no spells. So on the upkeep, this will flip. And oh, we got to go into attacks. So I'm going to attack with the veteran Cathar. I'm going to attack with probably just that this time. Well, let's let's keep the mana open to maybe give Briarbridge Patrol double strike. Because this is going to be a whole lot coming at us. So two damage. Two all right, and then it will be the Minotaur's turn. They're going to cast five again. One, whenever a Minotaur attacks his turn, it'll gain Death Touch. Let's go ahead and counter that. I don't like it. Two, three, four, five. This is exiled. And, oh, look at this. Another plundered statue. These are going to be attacking. We have two two threes and a two two. So we'll block here, we'll block here, and we'll block here. These three die. We get a clue, and that is the end of the turn. All right, draw. Drown your temple and a loam dryad. I don't really like the loam dryad. In fact, I think it's better to harvest right now because the loam dryad is useless. We'll harvest right now. We'll get a Hanwire militia captain and a woodland stream. I think the woodland stream is actually better than the loam dryad. Loam dryad. And we're gonna just drown your temple because we can get it back later. Okay. Step two: the attacks. Let's see. We're going to attack with. I think we attack with a solitary hunter. We have a big, we're gonna have a big field of guys soon. Well, we'll play the woodland stream, right? So let's attack with the solitary hunter, the veteran Cathar. Just this, that's five, that's still five damage. One, two, three, four, five. All right, all this is gone. On this side, we're going to there's nothing else to cast here. On this side, we're going to go ahead and cast the Pale Rider, discarding the twins, and then casting the twins off of its madness cost. So we have all the defense and ways of it going further. Now we're going to do six from the Minotaurs. One, two, three, four, five, Six. All right. So, 
Consuming Rage is cast. When a Minotaur attacks its turn, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn and destroy the creature at the end of combat. So all of these creatures are going to get plus 2 plus 0 and they will be destroyed at the end of combat. These guys can kill any of our creatures except if I give Briar Bridge Patrol the double striking from the Veteran Cathar. So that'll kill off one of the Gore Seekers and I guess I can trade one Apothecary guys because that's not that useful. Those are four, two, four twos and four threes. Four three can be blocked by you and I will just take the rest of the damage since they're going to die. Well, you know what? I can just take this damage right here, right? So that's four plus 10, it's 14 damage. Everything's gonna die anyways. So yeah, everything dies. I take 10 damage, go to nine. Bribridge Patrol gets us a clue. And that is the end of the turn, okay? Maybe we'll draw into more gas. Let's hope so. I have a forest on this side and an island on this side. I'm not really a fan of the forest or the island. Let's go ahead and loot. I have a plains and a forest. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of the plains. And on this side, we'll get rid of the island. Go ahead and play the forest and the forest. I think I'm going to angelic purge. So we'll use this for mana. So we'll use this for that mana, and then we'll use planes. Sacking the... We'll sack an extra planes. To Angelic Purge and kill one of these plundered statues, which will draw us both the card. And reduce the number of minotaurs coming in at us. We'll play another swamp. Play the other planes. And let's see. We can... Oh, let's go on a, a big attack, I guess. We have a lot of blockers. Cathar's gonna attack. Uh, Hunter's going to attack. Let's go ahead and attack with the Geist. We have the mana to give one of these guys double strike, so we'll go ahead and give the 3-3 three, the three, three double strike as well. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, and we have one vitality salve. When it's put into a graveyard from anywhere, we can return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. So let's go ahead and grab a creature and put it on the battlefield. Of these creatures, I think the other veteran Cathar might be the best. Of these creatures, I think the Emissary of the Sleepless is the best. When it enters the battlefield, if a creature died this turn, uh, no creatures died this turn, but a 2-4 body is pretty good. I'll take it. And we'll go ahead and cast the Hanmar Militia Captain as well. It's going to transform at the beginning of the next upkeep, which is pretty good. And let's let's keep going. All right, it is now the Minotaur, the Horde's turn. The Horde will cast 5 again. There is a Minotaur Youngblood, another Minotaur young, young Horn. I mean a Descend on the Prey. It, Minotaur is getting first strike and must be blocked if able. Minotaurs get plus two plus O oh, and for, until end of turn. And we get a Mogus is Chosen, which is not attacking this turn. So all Minotaurs have plus two plus O oh, and first strike this turn, which is pretty bad. They're all four, four twos, first strike, and they must be blocked. So they're attacking, they must be blocked. Fortunately, the twins will eat one of these, and I think we just sacrifice something to it, to a 4-2. I guess we'll sacrifice one of these veteran Cathars, but we'll give it, we'll give it a double strike just so that they trade. So this eats the young horn. This trades with the first striking Minotaur young horn and the Mogus is chosen sticks around. All right, and that is the end of the Minotaur's turn. It is now our turn, so let's untap everything. Okay, on our upkeep, this deck controls four more creatures, so there is now a Westville Cult Leader, which is equal to, power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures, 
control, so it is a 5-5. Five, five, and we get a 1-1 one, one at the end of each turn, which makes it super strong. Um, I want to keep it to tangle with the Mogus is chosen, but I think we're going to attack with a lot of other things this turn. Actually, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards left in the battlefield. We do need to survive the Mogus is chosen, but everything else I think is going to attack to finish off the enemy. So let's go ahead. Attack. 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 That's more damage than it can handle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the Massacre Totem makes us a uh, mill seven more, but there's not enough for that. And then we're going to pass the turn. At the end of the turn, that's going to get a 1-1. One, one. We'll go ahead and use the back of one of these clues as one of these extra 1-1 one, one cults. So that's a 6-6 six, six now. And Mogus is chosen and taps. Mogus is chosen attacks. It's blocked by the giant Westfield cult leader and kills it. And the Shadows of Innistrad sealed decks defeat the Battle of the Horde challenge deck from Theros. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and leave a comment to let me know if you'd like to see something in particular. And thanks everybody for watching, this was Refresh, and I will see you next time.